processed. Mind you, I'm not asking which one's healthiest. In reality, people have spoken more processing, yet they're actually healthier than Costco. So why do we look at processed food as so evil or so bad for us, and how can we get away from this belief? Cameron English quotes in the article, The Nutrition Myth That Won't Die, that the term processed food is a poorly defined synonym for bad, widely used by academics and journalists who aren't held accountable for their imprecise language. In this speech, I will pr be persuading you to believe that processed food is not so bad, how it can be beneficial to include in your lifestyle, and common misconceptions and drawback drawbacks around eating processed food. In the past few years, I've dealt with a lot of trouble with eating and trying to get enough calories and nutrients and etc. I've tried the Whole30 diet twice, but I only managed to complete it once during my strike on processed foods earlier this year. Whole30 is basically a diet restricted to literal whole foods consisting of no processed foods, so you can't have grains, no milk, no added sugars for 30 days. And I did this due to my interest in food and believed there would be benefits to doing it. Though in reality, I actually couldn't live a normal lifestyle. I couldn't eat my mom's pasta, I couldn't eat ice cream with my friends, I couldn't even use salad dressing, which really sucks. I wouldn't call this diet bad for you, but the unrealistic restriction led to opposite outcomes in the end, and I was forced to relearn how to incorporate normal food into my diet. If a person wanted to successfully not include processed food altogether, they, it's likely that they would be malnourished, obese, or underweight. Shufo quotes in the article, can processed food be part of a responsible diet, that the diet would be so restrictive and limited that the food intake is either too low in important vitamins and minerals or too high or low in sugar, salt, and fat. Processed food gives us a lot of our nutrition. From a nutritional standpoint, as a nutrition source from Harvard claims, processed food and ultra processed food can provide key nutrients. Some nutrients like D vitamins and iron can be added into foods and even protein is naturally retained through processing. Fortification and enrichment processing, which is the addition of nutrition to foods that already didn't have them already, has been benefited the nutrition of people in the United States. In the article of processed foods contributing to nutrition, Connie Weaver says if enrichment and fortification weren't present in food, a giant percentage of the population would be missing adequate intakes of vitamins A, D, C, E, thiamine, folate, calcium, magnesium, and iron. You now understand why it's nearly impossible to neglect all processed foods and the important processed food plays in our diets and lifestyle. From this, I will transition into multiple reasons as why processed food is beneficial to us. Processed foods have a major impact on food security not only in the United States, but also around the world. Quoted by Schufeld, many processed foods are in inexpensive foods made from ingredients that have been designed, manufactured, and distributed to families to improve nutritional status. Not only that, but processing is necessary for the growing food supply. Weaver quotes, processing helps alleviate some problems of malnutrition and helps make improvements in food security. Harvard also claims some processed and fortified foods provide important nutrients that may not otherwise be obtained by, like in a busy household or one that has a limited food budget. Processed food can also save us time rather than a home-cooked meal. From the article, Healthy Processed Foods by Tufts University, processing makes nutritious and safe available safe food available to millions of people and prolongs the shelf life, making food easier to store and cook to increase the chance that a person will eat healthier. As Shufo quotes, processing of foods in a manufacturing plant extends shelf life by, great, by greatly showing nutrient loss in rotting, providing more vitamins and minerals, minerals than raw foods handled properly. Processed food allows for longer storage to remain safe to eat as well. They can also be time savers to help simplify meal planning and preparation, giving us convenience in our lives. Processed foods can also be beneficial to our health for many reasons. Tufts University quotes, many foods need to go through processing to make them even digestible or edible. This includes pasteurization to kill disease-causing organisms, cooking to increase digestibility of foods like grains, and freezing to preserve freshness. For example, Harvard claims even high-end processed foods like olive oil and rolled oats have been linked with lower rates of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Joanna Dwyer quotes in the article, why are processed foods so controversial? That processed foods provide the most fiber, iron, and folate in the diet, and they're good sources of vitamin D, calcium, potassium, and vitamin B12. Not only do processed foods provide necessary nutrients, but as Schufeld claims, cooking and processing help prevent food poisoning by killing microbes, as well as adding healthy preservatives to minimize or eliminate any health hazards. I've now covered three large benefits to processed foods, including food security, time preservation, and health. Even though this was given, as well as an overview of why processed foods are important to our diets, you might not be fully convinced. So I'll be talking about the misconceptions and drawbacks included in the diet. 
might think, but not all processed foods get things. You're right, and that's true. Not all processed foods come with benefits, as most junk foods are processed, but not all junk foods are, not all processed foods are junk, as Shufel claims. Essentially, major food processing does have some drawbacks. Depending on the degree of processing, many nutrients can be destroyed or eliminated. According to Harvard, although food manufacturers can add back some of the nutrients lost, it's almost impossible to recreate the food in its original form. An ultra-processed food would be an example of this, since increased risk of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease are all associated with an extremely high intake of sugars, fats, and salts. Though many items like Kit Kats and Pop contain an unnecessary amount of these, the majority of processed foods aren't as negative as people make them to be, according to English. Shufelt agrees processed food is neither the answer nor the cause to all of its health problems. Even though ultra-processed food can become harmful, this is only at such an extent of intaking food that contain the high amount of sugars, sodiums, and fats. Even with knowing processed foods aren't so bad for you, you still might believe they are. But do you believe fresh foods are always better than processed foods? English quotes that consuming too much raw or unprocessed sugars, like any sugars and fruits, for example, will make you just as obese and diabetic as easily as drinking too many sodas will. Additionally, Shufelt claims fresh food or foods with the cleanest labels are not always the most nutritious. Both time and temperature affect the loss of nutrients in rotting or fresh foods. This means that there are many times where processed food is a better choice in terms of nutrition, safety, quality, availability, and freshness. Finally, how can we identify ultra-processed foods containing the worst health benefits so that we know how to incorporate the ones with the greatest nutritional value? Tufts University says, look at the nutrition and ingredient labels when choosing products to increase your awareness of what is in the product so that you are able to make informed decisions. You will know, based on the label, that ultra-processed food that contains an unevenly high ratio of calories to nutrients is unhealthy. Likewise, beware of the ingredients listed on a greenwashed label, such as any of these you might have seen before, as they actually typically fall into the ultra-processed food category and likely have many main chemicals. In my persuasive speech, I spoke about processed foods not being so bad, how they're beneficial to include in your diet, and misconceptions and solutions regarding processed foods. So the next time you think processed food is bad, you might want to change your mind. Here are my sources. Thanks for listening.